What's up, YouTube? It's Fitzbro, and we've got a game here between the Viper. You know him, the GOAT. He is back on AoE 4, and this is his first game on the new February patch. He is playing as the Roos, and he is up against Kladkika. Now, I'm not too familiar with this player, but I did look up their rank. Kladkika currently ranked 44 on the ladder, with Viper being currently ranked 82, though he has not been playing a ton recently. So, uh... You know, maybe he's just brushing off the cobwebs, but he is excited about the new patch, I am sure. And he is here trying out the Roos. Now, um, his opponent playing as the Abyssey Dynasty. This is actually a civilization we saw being used against the Roos, even when the Roos had their extremely OP horse archers. So it's interesting to see uh, this matchup here yet again. We are, are on a French pass, so a lot of distance between the two players. And when we talk about these two civilizations, Abseed got a little bit of a buff in the latest patch, right? They now gather, they can hold 13 berries here instead of 10. We'll see if we can see a villager doing it. And they also, uh, they will gather a little bit faster. Now we see him going straight for the berries. Some players still go for the sheep and then go to the berries, but uh, Cloudkika here is going right for the berries. And they also will age up 15 seconds faster now. Now, the Roos, on the other hand, they've kind of received a series of nerfs one after the next for the last few patches. Uh, so a small nerf here. The animation canceling of Scouts has gone. Now, why is that a nerf for Roos if it affects everyone? Well, the Roos were more likely to have a series of two, maybe three or even four Scouts on the map and could really capitalize on that animation canceling in the early game. So that is now gone. Another thing to consider is that now the... Scouts cost 70 foods. That is 10 food more expensive. So you're paying more per scout. So it's a little bit of a nerf to the Roos. And uh, that's kind of the stage here. We've got two, two uh, fun civilizations to see in this matchup. And it's good to see Viper back here on the ladder. And we'll see how uh, he brushes off the cobwebs here with the Roos. Now, this is a map when I'm playing as the Abbasid. You know that's probably my favorite civilization right now. Sometimes I go for some super greedy trade trade post boom because you can uh, train your your uh, you can train your tr traders for cheaper than other civilizations. But that does require you to get some walls up in order to secure your trade line, and it's a little hard to get up and going. I don't see it used really much in the pro scene, but I have seen I've even seen Harrow do it. Um, and on the ladder. So we'll see if Cloudkika goes for that at all. And Roos is kind of a civilization that likes to boom sometimes, but then also likes to rush with because they get knights in the second age. But this is a big map if you were going to try to try to rush. So we'll see how Viper plays this as he gets into the second age. You see him bringing back those dogs. If you did not already know this about the Roos, they get gold when they kill hunts. So you see him out here killing these wolves and killing sheep or killing deer rather you see 25 gold right there and you unlock these different bounties so not only do they get that gold uh you can see he's already unlocked tier two plus 10 percent villager food harvest rate and the hunting cabin will generate gold every 24 seconds so he is shooting for that 500 level bounty but one way they do that is they aggro the the wolves and they bring them back to the town center which is what we saw going on there now the viper is aging up with the golden gate this is an economic uh landmark it gives you these trades uh, every so often and you're able to uh, to trade that for additional resources at this golden gate so it's kind of like a fancy market of sorts you get with a landmark but you have to have these trades available so uh, meanwhile Cloud get going up with the economic wing which will give him the cheaper villagers once he gets the fresh food stuffs it makes them 25 food instead of 50 and uh, it looks like he's transitioning uh, a little bit to berries he did build that mill and then he's sending a lot of villagers to wood so I'm trying to see if he's going for stone. He is going for stone. So this means he is probably most certainly going for a second town center. And he went for the mill. I wonder if he'll go for uh, how early he'll go on for wheelbarrow. Because some people will get wheelbarrow in kind of in transition slash early uh, second age. But I think he's prioritizing this, uh, this second town center. But Viper knows this. He's over here. He's scouted. Not only does he know that, look at that. He's getting gold from killing these deer. So he might get really close to this tier three bounty. Let's see. That'll be another 10, another 10. What's left on the map to get? So, Plotka really didn't try to, to kill a deer, it doesn't appear. Or, or at least he didn't do a very good job of it. Any deer left over here? No, there are. A lot of rhyming. I'm sorry. Deer appear here. Okay, here comes the stable. So, I imagine this might probably be for some knights. Perhaps he's going to go harass Plotka a little bit since he knows that he's going for that second town center. 
Um, and let's see here. Oh, he's a little bit... Okay, he pulled a little early. It looks like he's going out. Is he going to build his town center over here? Is that what he's doing? That looks to maybe be his goal. That's that's rather far away. Typically, you see people drop that second town center a little closer. But uh, yeah, there we go. He's going right between the trees. That's kind of a nice spot, though. It gives him a, a lot of wood secure under this town center. But anyways, here that comes, and he is drop. He is pulling off those three villagers. I like how he pulled uh, six, like, what was it, five or six villagers early, left the final three, get that final stone, so that he didn't have to have 300 stone and then be walking with all of those villagers. It's just a little detail, but that makes a big difference as far as, uh, you know, villager seconds. Uh, now let's watch to see if he maybe goes for that wheelbarrow, dropping down a stable of his own. We do have, now we have some horsemen. I said we might see some knights, but it looks like Viper is going for the horsemen right now. And he's bringing four villagers out. Is he trying to build a wall, perhaps? Or it could also be a forward base. So we'll have to see what he's planning to do with these villagers. But I like this nonetheless. Let's see what they do. Oh, what was that? What was that? Okay, so we got Scout. The Scout knows there are two horsemen out on the field. But that's no direct threat to him for quite some time here right now. And uh, building a house. I think Viper's trying to build some, some walls maybe out here this is a little curious he brought four villagers that's quite a few villagers to bring uh here he goes is he gonna maybe wall like all the way up to his opponent's base i think he's going to now meanwhile that second town center is up so since those villagers cost 25 food it basically takes 50 food to train two villagers at a time for the abbasid so he is booming away uh he's building a hunting cabin very interesting so I still think he's probably going to build a wall. Is he just going to gather this food out here instead of bringing it back? Maybe he's saving. Instead, it used to be the play was to get professional scouts all the time. Now, you do see that Viper did get Wheelbarrow. So he must have got that rather early on in the second age. But it looks like he's just going for the... I don't know. Why not come for this food? I, I, I think there's something bigger at play here. Maybe he'll come for this boar. Maybe he's going to kill this boar in a bit. I don't know. I like different. I, I like seeing something different out here. Okay, so we've got a barracks and a stable here for Claudia, just kind of playing defensively. He's probably just going to boom up and probably think about the third age here soon, though. We'll see if he drops more military buildings. What was that? Okay, just a horseman running by. Scout going down. I wonder if he's planning on going for this boar. You see a rallied horseman here. But we do have archers coming out. Uh, this is kind of a difficult map for doing this kind of feudal pressure if you're like running your archers across the map because that is a long distance to run i mean we could time it i bet somebody knows in the chat how many seconds it takes for an archer to run across the field here but it's a long time um and the question will be can these do enough if any pressure now clockica looking to wall himself in Man, I would love to see Abbasid going for a trade boom here but i don't know if he will i think he's just playing a little defensively now clockica doing the same thing coming out with some spearmen uh, but he needs to be careful. There's some archers there, but I think he is in the advantage here since he does have one horseman and the spears will quickly kill the enemy horseman and scout. And horsemen, they have, they have this two ranged armor, which is a big difference. So that means if you look at these viper, uh, vipers archers and they deal out five damage, but a horseman has two armor, uh, he's only going to receive three damage per shot. So that's a significant change to horsemen in recent patches. See a few horsemen to the north. Oh, he stopped these villagers and even killed one that was building the wall there. Nice. But it looks like he does. He almost has the southern side walled off. This is a very uh, kind of scrappy game so far. Um, sometimes Ruse get to sit back in Fast Castle. Sometimes that could be the case for uh, the Abbasy. Now, look at this. Viper, before even going for Steeled Arrow, he got Siege Engineering. That means he is going right for a ram. He is ready to play aggressive, and I think he's going to be playing this out in the Feudal Age. Um, but at the same time, Klakaka has four military buildings, two barracks, two stables. He's going to be ready for this push, and not to mention, this is an entirely melee army. Sometimes if you mass archers, it's a little harder to deal with rams, but this army will be quite good at dispatching rams if they become a big threat. Only thing I will say is if those rams come in... There are military buildings kind of towards the front to grab, but he's kind of built a, a safe little spot here to have his villagers come out and heal if he needs to. But uh, let's see if he does build these rams in, 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 at all. Horsemen running around, uh, def denying this wall from the northern side. But look at the villager count. 34 for Viper versus the 42 right now for the Abbasid. 
And his numbers just aren't the same. I think they're just kind of trickling across the map. And that he, that's kind of gives you the defender's position in something like this. He has one archer range, one stable. He is going for that steeled arrow. Has been, oh, he has five trades sitting there if he wants to do it. Okay, now we've got horsemen and archers moving up. But uh, I just don't think it's going to do a whole lot right now. He is putting a ram, so that'll be something to deal with. But uh, I don't know. Klakika's army is going to be quite... Uh, Quite strong as he has a, a pretty booming eco right now. Lots of food and wood coming in. Um, I didn't pay attention to him. Oh, he didn't get it. I said we'd watch to see if he got Wheelbarrow, but he did skip Wheelbarrow altogether. There's different play styles we see here. Um, okay, we've got the horseman just getting ready for this big fight. And honestly, I think this is going to be a little bit challenging. If those spearmen can make contact with these horsemen, uh, he'll have to retreat. This will be interesting because it's the, the archer horse comp versus the the spear horseman comp. But he can just sit back, try to use that town center fire if his opponent gets close enough. He has a lot of spears here. Okay, here we go. Big fight. We've got horsemen charging forward here up on the archers. And this is kind of the issue when you're in this scenario is those spearmen can sit there and lay down the damage while the horsemen just keep picking off archers. Um, and it forces the archer player to fall back while the all melee army can just keep pushing forward. Look at that nice surround on those archers. Wow. That was a, a beautiful micro there for Claudica. Uh, let's see how Viper handles this. He's really trying to target down the archer or the, the spearman with his archers, but he's just losing too much. I think Claudica has had the larger numbers there and it does look like Viper has uh, lost his army for this engagement. So if you're in the Abbasid shoes, this is a good spot to be in. Roos kind of play, overplayed their hand on the other side of the map and lost the army. I don't know where that ram went. Where'd that ram go? Did that already die or did he just pull it back? Maybe he canceled it. That, that might have been what he did. Okay, now this horse is um, pushing up. It looks like Viper had built uh, these forward bases, but he's not gonna be able to produce units fast enough to be able to like build an archer and sustain. He'll essentially be trickling at this point if Klagika just camps this. And now this is the little bit of the risk about when you build forward bases is if you lose a fight, you're not able to just rebatch armies because every unit come out is just gonna trickle away and die. And this is very different than a, then particularly if you're an AOE coming from Age of Empires 3, they're able to train batches. So this might not be as a big deal because you could drop out like five spearmen at once. But here in AOE 4, if you lose your army and you've got a forward base completely undefended, you basically have just lost those buildings. Okay, but Viper, he ain't out of this yet. He's got villagers back here getting the wood, doing a nice job of kind of treeing his lumber camps together, training that together. And uh, is he building backup? military buildings he is let's see we've got an archery range another archery range so he's got three archery range and a stable three archery ranges and a stable so going to be playing defensive archers are pretty good in a defensive scenario but Kalika has a decent amount of horsemen those are what i'm more nervous about will he put any spearmen in his composition it does look like Kalika was able to wall off to the north and these villagers are collecting that food. We thought he might, might, might do that earlier on. So he skipped Freshel Scouts and just went for the upgrades for hunting and has been just walking out to them. Uh, I think he got he, he got a fair amount of these deer. Look like the hunting cabin will be going down. Uh, but here we go. These two horsemen kind of scouting out what's the scenario. We've got two stables, three archer range. Okay, now mixing those early knights. Now those knights, they will do a much better job against these horsemen. But there's still spearmen out here. That's a lot of spearmen. And knights are going to be more expensive losses to those spearmen. I uh, see uh, Abyssey is able to age up. Let's see if he does it. I think he is going to age right now. Meanwhile, Viper spending all his res. He is just trying to hang on to survive. He does have eight uh, exchanges available if he wants to use it. And there we go. We do see that age up. We'll come right back to see what's going on as the attack comes in. He's going up with the Culture Wing. Pretty popular age up option for the Abyssey. And here we go. Viper. Kiting back with his archers. It'd be nice to have a few spearmen to deal with this, but he's trying to get out of the way. Archers moving back. Yeah, and Klaka doesn't want to come under that town center quite yet. Uh, picking off a villager to the north side. And we have the Abyssey player pulling back. I mean, he's aging up. He doesn't have to take this fight. In fact, it's generally not a good idea if you've just invested all these resources in aging up to go lose your army. But look at this, even though he's aging up, he has more resources in the bank. And that's because villager wise, he's sent out just about 70 villagers while his opponent has 48 villagers. That is a huge difference. 
And that's just been off two town centers. I was, I was double checking to make sure he didn't sneak a third town center in here. That's two town centers. No trade boom for the Abbasid. It does look like he's building some stone walls, though. Really looking to uh, trap his opponent. Yeah, and he can sit back. Maybe he'll go for a sacred victory. We'll have to see. Oh, boy. He's got to be careful here with these knights. They could get picked up by these spearmen. If he is not... There we go. He was able to micro back in time. Trying to get out of there. Trying to stop the walls. But, oh, boy. This is a bad spot to be caught. His horsemen right in striking distance of these spearmen. You see him being uh, knocked out. Those archers falling back. But without those horsemen, he has no anti-cav. He does not have any spearmen. And he has to fall back. So doing his best now, he has a fair amount of archers and he does have the upgrade, right? So he can he can still deal some decent damage. And you can see he was able to wipe this out because he just had sheer number of archers. So despite losing all those horsemen, he was okay in this fight. You know, maybe we, we panic we panicked a little bit early on there. Okay, Viper knows his opponent is aged up. He is trying to see what he can do to disrupt this wall building coming down, but that segment has already been built. And for these stone walls, you can't attack this. If you even hammer it one time with a villager. You then can't attack, but Vipers already has Siege Engineering. We see him dropping down that ram. These walls won't be a problem for him. What is Claude up to over here? Maybe it's Clad, Claude, I don't know. Holy barracks. Okay, so he is going for one, two, three, four barracks and five barracks in man arm spam. So he is going all in on these man arms. You can see the stone walls have been built to the north. Uh, honestly, I would like to see him drop down a, uh, a monastery and just take these sacred sites. Or is it a mo I guess it's a mosque for them. Yes, mosque. Okay, Spearman, look at that. Now, this is the danger. If you only hammer the wall once, that ram can come through very, very quickly. Boom, he's already got a hole. Nice. So, Viper, he has broken through, and he is aging up himself right now. Let's see what he's going up with. Okay, the Abbey of the Trinity to train this warrior priest. Not a big surprise there. Okay, so Horsemen chasing down Viper and Spearman. They're going to come in, and they're probably just going to siege down that ram. Where did Viper's archers go? They pulled back. Uh, dang, that's kind of a, a, an expensive loss for that ram, but it, it did its job. But I think th that wall is probably going to be rebuilt immediately. And that secondary wall stopped his forces from advancing too far. He did kill some villagers, but it does look like they get surrounded in the end. And Abbasid looking really, really strong right now. I mean, when you're up against the Abbasid and they're able to get off, get away with the two town center boom, and you don't really do any real economic ba damage and you lose the military fight, this is a hard situation to come back from. Let's look at the resources per minute, income per minute. Look at that. Across the board, Abbasid out gathering by a significant amount. He has the map control. What is this? That's a siege workshop. And at the end of the day, it'll come down to some military micro, right? You can have all the economic advantage in the world, but if... You know, a big mangonel shot wipes out your whole army. It's anyone's game. So we'll see if Viper has some tricks up his sleeve. He's an, one of the best players. I'm sure he is not out of this quite yet. Okay, so Viper took some shots from that Stonewall Tower. That Stonewall Tower has a lot of range. You can see here. It's good to have a C very far and it was able to deny these berries. And he is building another Stonewall Tower just to defend that location from the, the north side. And now he is taking those sacred sites. There is one. He'll need to get this one too. Now, if you capture the sacred sites, that's 10 minutes for a victory. So he can win in 10 minutes if he's able to capture that sacred site. Viper bringing his archers forward, spreading them out because he knows there could be Mangonel lurking, right? Especially since these spearmen could build a Mangonel in a second. Now, this is a nice fight. Look at this. Going after these archers or, or these spearmen, which the archers do counter and picking a few off for free uh, right as those upgrades came in too. So that was a good little engagement for him. But look at all these. Man, that's a lot of man arms. He's going to need a ton of crossbows or he's going to need a, uh, a, t a a mangonel shot. Yeah, he sees that and he's going to pull back immediately. Now let's look at the speed on these units. We've got these archers which have no armor. They move at 1.25 tile speed versus the the armored man arms who run at also 1.12. I always find it curious that a, a heavily armored unit can move at the same rate as a... You know, a light foot archer. But uh, there it is. We have Springles out because he's trying to protect his archer mass. He does have some crossbows. Now, those crossbows, they will deal some plenty of damage against this man arm. They are the anti-armor specialist, as you can see there. But he doesn't really have a front line to protect if any cavalry kind of charge up. So going for an all-archer composition with some Springles on the back line. 
And uh, by the way, while we talk about the Abbasid bonuses, look at this. You get your tier three bounty at 500 and look at that. He is five bounties short of getting that tier three bounty, which would be a nice boost to his eco, but unfortunately missing out on that. Let's look at where we are looking at the current resources. Okay, so we've got a bunch of archers, bunch of van arm or bunch of crossbows. He does now has 14 crossbows. I mean, look at all of these. Uh, is he getting okay? He's just training more sprinkles. What was that? Oh, what the? How did a ram get in here? <laughs> uh, he must have snuck this around the side, but we got a ram poking at the stone mine. Did it take something down there? I don't think so. Just going to get that mine, but <laughs> kind of funny. I don't know how he got in. Maybe he came around from the north side or something. Okay, so starting to ram on his own. Now, he, Claude still doesn't have both these sacred sites. He's just now starting to get that second one. Okay, and starting to ram through that stone wall, but there is going to be a keep to meet him. Let's see what upgrades have been going on back here for the Abbasid. He did get... Okay, so not only did he get the tech, which makes his uh, technologies cheaper, he got the tech that makes his moss heal nearby units. That's this one right here. So these moss... I'm not moss, but keeps, rather. These keeps will heal up these spearmen and these men arms if he stands next to this you'll see once it gets built i love that he's building this entire castle with one lone villager that villager is carrying the weight of the whole abzi dynasty okay we see sacred site of victory approaching that means at 21 ish minutes that will be victory for claude if viper is unable to contest the sacred sites and this is a really hard map to come back on if you get walled in and your opponent gets those sacred sites I mean, the clock is ticking, and not only is your opponent getting extra gold, not only do they get the gold trickle, they have control of all of the main gold ore in the middle of the map. Uh, you can see he'll run out of gold over time, so that's a big deal. Okay, so we've got some farming going on for Viper. What was that? Okay, he is through. We got crossbow and horsemen. Engaging, we've got these spring golds not really doing a whole lot. He's just got it. He has to have them to protect from any Mangonel. But look at those man arm numbers. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of man arms, and he does not have enough crossbows to deal with that. Claude just looking absolutely dominating here with the Abbasid Dynasty. And uh Roos just looking a little bit weak in this matchup on maybe this map, maybe the strategy. I'm not sure what the go-to is. And I certainly never tried to second guess what a Viper was doing, because he is one of the best players at this game. But, uh, yeah, it just looked like Abbasid has had a complete control ever since that Roost push kind of failed. Uh, it's kind of been a snowball of Abbasid military power. He's done a good job of taking that uh, map control, putting down those stone walls, getting some keeps to defend up in the past. And uh, now it's just a matter of time, uh, probably until Viper uh, is just completely suppressed. I mean, these man arms, how are you, you going to deal with those? All he has is archers. Look at the villager count. 60 for Viper versus the 112 of Claudica. And man arms, they are a problem to deal with when they're just running through your eco like this. Now these crossbows, they're dealing damage. He's got eight of them there. He, he was able to whittle down a few of those. But will it be enough? We'll have to see. Uh-oh. Losing villager down to the south. There's horsemen and man arms running up. This is less than desirable for Viper here. And now we got crossbows pushing in, looking to maybe harass the economy a little bit more. I'm sorry, this is this is Viper's crossbows. Woo, getting crazy, getting crazy. But we do have knights on the back line. Kind of raiding going on everywhere. Oh, and I hear it. GG is called and Viper taps out. We've got the Abyssey Dynasty taking down the goat. Viper playing as Roost. This was his first game here on the new patch as of February. But... Let's just consider it. He's getting back into the swing of things. He took a little bit of time off of AoE 4, and I'm sure that he'll be warming up for plenty of competitive action that'll be coming back to you. As always, make sure you hit that sub button. If you enjoyed this casted game, leave me a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.